Sears Silvertone IF Silver Mica Disease Treatment. We're going to pull this suspected IF transformer out of this. This is part two of the Silvertone AM FM uh, console stereo. Watch part one for the diagnosis. We'll do this in 4K. Just so the people that got those new uh, high, uh, ultra high definition flat screens, uh, smart TVs for Christmas or from Walmart for Black Friday can watch it in full HD. And I'm just going to verify which IF transformer it is again real quick. So we'll go... So we got a signal there and then nothing over here. So what we're going to do is pull this IF transformer out right here. Uh, it's got five pins. One is a ground on the side of the case so we don't need to mark it. Alright, let's have a look here. I just took my time and desoldered it very gently, but I tried to get on and off of it fast to get the heat. And I used a solder bubble here to suck the solder off but um all we need to do is pry these back and this should pop right out we know how it's oriented because we got the green paint here and the uh the ground for the can on this side and i don't even quite know what to think of this i've never seen one that looked like this on the inside you can see these two uh clamps that this is the capacitor right here in between these two clamps right there is the capacitor that's one capacitor and then if we turn it around you can see the that's the other capacitor right there um, this is a very unusual simple cheap design usually they're they're like washers stacked on top of each other so this is very different this is going to be very easy all i'm going to do is just uh delete these um these tabs that are these little things here and put capacitors on the bottom this is very bizarre now what i could do is i could disconnect one wire from each side and measure the capacitance but i'll have to think about that Anyway, that's that's the capacitor inside there, and I don't even see any silver mica disease here. I would even dare say that these uh, capacitors are different. Um, you look at that one on that side, it looks much smaller than this one over here. Now, I don't know... I don't know which one would actually be a lower or higher value, but you can see this. This this is not a good example of IF IF transformer uh, uh, silver mica disease at all, because I don't even see silver mica disease here. I don't know if this is going to show up in the video, but here's one of the tabs I pulled them off. They're not even soldered into place. They're just like pinned in there. I don't know if this is going to show up, but underneath on the mica wafer where this was touching, there's almost like a wet, uh, oily type substance. And I don't know if that was preventing this from being making contact or what, but I've completely... Those two, I've... Um, And in this side here, I've just bent them up out of the way. And I have not adjusted the core. Haven't touched it. We're going to put variable capacitors on this, on the bottom, and try and bring it into tune, and then remove the variable capacitors and measure the value of them, and then go with fixed values. Then we'll adjust the core. Um on a visual alignment and this thing is wet it's got some kind of oily
This thing is wet. Uh, I don't know if this is showing up in the camera, but it's almost like it's oily, like it was it was sprayed with uh, uh, contact cleaner. But uh, there's the uh, mica wafers, and you can see they're leaving liquid on the on the thing here. See that? I don't know, why is this wet inside here? Alright, it's all back together, ready to solder back in with the capacitors gutted out and it's all cleaned up. Okay, see what we've done here? Take a look. We've put two 8 to 100 Pico Puff micro puff ceramic trimmer capacitors. Now I'll try and dial it in. Alright, let's see if we could bring this in. This is going to be tough. Um, come over here. So we got it there. Come over here. I'm going to crank the signal thing way up. There you go. That was the problem. Crap, now it's like got too much gain. I need to get off this music. Try and find some talk. It's a cool question that you had because, you know, it's a question that my... A lot of heating jobs as well. Heating? No good plumbers at Mike Diamond do that, too. Oh, yeah. Wall and floor furnaces, gravity furnaces, forced air furnaces, and heat pumps. Huh. Maybe I should add heating to Stinky's router services. Could you get to most calls within an hour? Absolutely not. Could you do repairs on the spot without having to make another trip for parts? No way, Jose! I wouldn't do it, Uncle Bubba. Nobody wants inconvenient heating repair from Stinky when they can have convenient heating repair from his male good plumber. This is Mike Diamond, and I guarantee my plumber will show up on time and smell good, or your house call is free. Having an issue with your... I don't know if it's picking it up, but that's from the uh, from the PC speaker. We got another problem. This one is uh, this one's screwing up too. Caps are bad in that one too. Okay, I'm feeding 10.7 in to the test point here, and I have the meter on the output of the IF, and we're just going to do a quick uh, alignment with the signal generator. We're going to peak the voltage on 10.7, then I'm going to pull the caps off and measure them, and hope this gets me close enough. Okay, that's 10.7 megahertz. Gonna drop it. 10.6, 10.5, 10 10.8. See, it's tuned a little bit low. Now they're all off, but what I'm assuming by peaking this, I'm gonna at least dial this one section in. So here we go. Let's see what we can do here. And I'll do separate videos on each section. Ooh, boy, is that touchy. Wow, look at that. 
super touchy. It's almost beyond what I can, this pot's almost too coarse. Uh, I'm going to turn the output power down a little bit. That's negative 17, negative 27. And now I'm going to do the other one here. You can see this. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off and tweak on this a little bit. Those trimmers are way too coarse. I mean, just barely, less than a degree just makes a huge difference, but it's still off. I got that stage peak. That's 10.7, uh, 10.6. There we go, 10.6. 10.7 10.8 you can see something is still off but I'm gonna I'm gonna take one of those caps off and measure it and try and get in the ballpark and maybe get a smaller trimmer measuring the cap capacitors on this apparatus and this thing is very accurate for small values the primary is reading about 34 picofarads and the secondary about 80, 86 or something like that. Um, I need to, I need to play with this some more. I might be, I can't believe they'd be different values. I picked these up. These are good NPO caps. So I was at the electronics store. There's a 36, a 39, a 33, and a 75. Okay, with a 36 sitting there on the primary, it's measuring 5.75 volts. With a 39, it is 2.21 volts. That's 3 picofarads. With a 33, it is 8.76 volts. Wow. With a 30, it's 5.75 volts, so obviously it's a 33. And I made a mistake. I still had the generator on 10.6, so I put it up to 10.7. It's a 30 picofarad, not a 33. And I'm sure somebody is filling their colostomy bag over the lead length of the capacitors. Oh, it's not going to throw it off that much. I'll trim it when I find the value and solder it down with short leads and I'll still have enough room to correct with the slugs. And double checking this one, I put it back with the fix 30 and then I did a full re, re uh, turn on that one and it's definitely around 85, 86. Uh, I don't even know if they make a capacitor like that. I'll have to look next time I go over the electronics store. This is part one. I'll do, a, I'll do each IF can. I'll do a whole nother video on. We'll do the other ones in 1080 because this thing's probably going to be six gigabytes. Um, all right, continuing on. That's how to find the value on the internal IF MICA capacitors, part one.